In this video, we are going to quickly cover some of the basics of aerial archaeology and the sources you can use to do this from your computer or laptop. Looking at aerial photographs is one of the best strategies we use as archaeologists to locate and identify archaeology, and occasionally a thorough study of these can even save us getting our feet muddy by heading out to dig or survey a site. Also, the bird's eye view can reveal sites which are completely invisible to the naked eye. There are two types of aerial photographs. Plan view, like this shot at South Cabri Castle, and the bleak view, which is shot at an angle. The latter of these is especially good for seeing earthworks. The resources in this video we will mostly consult are in plan view, but the features we are looking for can be applied to both types of photographs. Whilst there are many different tools we can use on a day-to-day -day basis, I find the Google Earth Pro is a fab resource for browsing modern aerial photographs. To get a free copy of Google Earth Pro, all you need to do is go to Google and search for download Google Earth and select the top option and follow the instructions. Once you have opened Google Earth, you can simply begin navigating by scrolling with the mouse or searching for an area you're interested in by this search bar in the top left hand corner. But how do you locate buried features from the air? And what clues can we look for? One of the best indicators of buried remains are crop marks. These occur when buried features under the soil affect the growth of vegetation above it. Generally, ditches create extra space for roots and the crops grow taller and are darker in colour. As you can see here at this field system in Queen Charlton, where the prehistoric ditches are highlighted by the darker colour in the crops. Other features, like buried walls and paths, will create weaker soils, and the vegetation above will appear to be shorter and lighter or occasionally browner in colour. Another indicator are soil marks, and here is an example from Queen Camel of a possible prehistoric enclosure. However, you can't quite see it right now, and sometimes you'll need to examine several photographs to understand what you might be looking at especially as the ground cover can change over the years. To do this, Google's got a handy tool where if you move your mouse to the top panel and click on the symbol of a clock with an arrow on it, you'll be able to browse historic aerial photographs. If we go back to 2001, you'll be able to see this soil mark more clearly after the field has been ploughed, where you can see this rough outline of a ditch. As I mentioned, these generally occur after a field has been ploughed, where the soil disturbance reveals the top of buried features, which contrast with the natural soil. The easiest to spot tend to be ditches, where the field has been exposed. Sometimes, however, you can also spot blackish spots, which can indicate areas of burning, like possible halves. And you can also find areas of scattered stones, which if in a linear arrangement, might indicate the remains of an old stone wall. Finally, perhaps the clearest indicator of buried archaeology are shadow marks. These are created when sunlight is interrupted by the remains of physical earthworks, casting shadows. For example, these ones surrounding this deserted medieval village at Lights Carey, with house platforms, field boundaries, possible hollowways and the remains of medieval ploughing are visible. Once you get your eye in, you'll be able to see all sorts of features, including prehistoric enclosures, hill forts, medieval strip linchets, and ridge and furrow to name a few. Generally, repeated features and linear features that don't align to modern boundaries tend to be a good clue for archaeology. However, modern features like underground pipes and natural geology can create these marks as well, so you may have to put on your detective hat and do a little bit of research. If you need to do some of this research in Somerset, perhaps the best place to start looking is the online historic environment record, which you can access on www.somersetheritage.org.uk. Occasionally, however, you may locate something entirely new, and if you do, please get in touch with the HER team here at the Southwest Heritage Trust. Also, our website MapView will also give you some access to aerial photographs taken just after the Second World War. These are especially useful for spotting World War II features or areas which have changed since this date, or have been built over, for example. 
Finally, another aerial resource which you can use is something called LIDAR, which stands for Light Detection and Ranging. This uses lasers targeted at the ground from an aerial vehicle and measures the reflection. This eventually produces a terrestrial model of the ground and is exceedingly good for spotting earthworks. And here you can see Salisbury Hill Camp or Salisbury Castle on the outside of Bath, where you can see the outside of the hill fort here, as well as some earthworks in the centre, which are the remains of medieval strip fields. You can browse LiDAR online at www.houseprices.io forward slash lab forward slash LiDAR forward slash map or www.lidarfinder.com. However, please note that these websites are not affiliated to the Southwest Heritage Trust. If you are familiar with GIS software, you can also download this data free from the Government Environment Agency website. So that's about it. So I just want to say thank you for watching and good luck with your aerial investigations.